that's wow. That's a difficult question to answer. Um, I don't know who would right now. I don't know who would do it. You know, um, when you you know when you learn things one particular way, um, it's kind of difficult to to see it from another angle. You know, I you know I grew up in a period where the music was just the most pristine and the most honest and um, clearly defined. And I'm not just saying R and B. You know, I mean, rock and roll was <laughs> rock and roll. You know what I mean? Um, but the way you know, I, I think it largely came from the fact that every group. Work together. Um, every band worked together, you know, and it took the complete collective to make one big sound. You know, right now, you know, for the way this industry is working, the side of the industry is working, it's basically one person doing everything until they bring a vocalist in. But for the most part, a lot of these guys are basically doing tracks, and they're not really producing songs, and they're not writing songs, so. It's a little bit different, you know what I mean? It's them in a room by themselves. You know, I like the collective effort. I like working with other people. Down to the last assistant, uh, engineer's assistant even. You know, I did, when I worked at Quad Recording in New York up until like uh, the end of the 90s, um, I even kept the assistant, the assistant's assistant. I kept them all involved in the project. I wanted them all to be able to learn something, and I can learn something from them as well. You, you, you never know where your education comes from. But I tried to keep them all involved because it's, it's a necessary thing, you know, because that, it, that assistant is trying to get somewhere too, and they don't always have an opportunity to get that close to their dreams. So when you bring them closer, you know, and stuff like that, you know, they hear ideas, they hear what you're doing, you know, you can look in their face and see the fascination and stuff, you know what I mean, and you can feed off that as well. You know, um, the, when I was getting started, there was a lot of different engineers and producers that let me sit in the back of a room and just watch the recording process, you know, uh, the production process. You know, I had to sit there quietly, you know, I didn't have an opinion, but, and some of them were great, some of them were horrible, you know, some of them were real mean bastards. You know, I mean, to, to, well, to the engineers and the engineers' assistants. I think, you know, I'm a firm believer. There's one thing that that taught me is that if I don't do anything else, I'm going to be as nice as I possibly can to the engineers that work with me and the assistants, and I'm going to hold them all closer just so that, you know, they're going to get enough of that BS from somebody else, but they're not going to get it from me. And I, and I don't want to be known for being that type of a person. Besides, you can learn so much faster. You know what I mean? You can get so much done so much faster, you know, and a lot of times, you know, with all those sessions I used to have at Quad Recording, everybody always wanted in those sessions, you know, so, but to me, I, I think that's the way to work. But, you know, there were a lot of people that helped me along the way with that, you know, and me being able to sit there and watch closely and listen intently, you know, so that I knew eventually when the day came that I'd be able to actually sit at the control desk you know, and actually take control of it and stuff, you know, I, um, I can see the fruition of what my dreams were. I, I, I think over the years I've managed to develop a sound. I never really paid attention to it before, um, but I've been reminded by a number of different people that, well, you know, you have a certain sound. And, um, I kind of sort of stepped outside of myself once and just kind of, I was at home basically is what it was and I put my catalog on and I was letting it play from my computer while I was cleaning the house. And I was hearing, I was beginning to hear the common thread that ran through everything. And um, I actually began to pick up on the fact that there is a sound that is totally mine. Um, and that's a big thing in the music business when you've developed a sound of your own that people can actually recognize that it's you. You can walk into a bar, you can hear on the radio, this, that, and the other. You know, people walk in the room and say, yeah, that's him. Oh, that's he's playing. You know, that's a really, really big achievement. You know, uh, because then people recognize you. <laughs> Whether they like you or not, they still recognize you. And hey, we're only as good as the people that recognize us, right? <laughs>